Hello everyone. Welcome to Neural Anatomy Part 2. I am Dr. Liu. I will be your instructor for this part. Uh, if you already read the syllabus, you may notice that this class was organized with one lecture and one lab. So before the uh, lecture time on Friday, on each Friday, uh, you need to finish the two narrated lecture for that week and finish the quizzes. So being prepared for the lecture and the lab. So this lecture is the lecture one, introduction to neuroscience and general organization of the neural system. Also, this course is technically called Applied Anatomy 2. Uh, it's really more accurately called a neuroscience or a neuropathology course. In this course, we will cover the function and the, stru the structure of nervous system. And uh, we will have a quite a bit of um, pathology of the uh, nervous system. So it's not a strict neuroanatomy course, and it blended in with a lot of pathology and function. To start this course, I want you on your own to read through slides 4 to 10. You may notice these slides were labeled with red. Uh, this is the information that I put in because I think it is interesting, but I am not going to test you on it. So slides 4 to 10 gives you some of the history and the origins of neuroscience. And it is very interesting, uh, but you, will, you won't be a test on any of the information. So this is slide 11, and it's important because it outlines who the, is considered the father of neuroscience, and that's Ramon Alcohol. He's considered that because of what he did. He proposed that the nervous system was composed of individual neurons. That's not what was thought of in the past. Prior to that, it was thought that the nervous system was this continuous network. And he proposed that the neurons were separated by each other. And that theory was proved finally in the 1950s when the electron microscope was developed. And with that high-powered microscope, you can actually see that there was a space, a gap between the neurons. And his theory then was called the Neuron Doctrine. Uh, this part from uh, slides number 12 to number 19, uh, just to give you a rough introduction for the modern technology uh, to study neuroscience like CT, PET, MRI, and TMS. Again, uh, this part will not be tested. Okay, 
Let's move on to nervous system classification and also we will learn some basic idea and uh, basic terms about neuroanatomy. The nervous system could be classified by different ways, for example, anatomical classification or functional classification. So in anatomy, the nervous system could be divided into two parts, like the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The uh, central nervous system includes brain and spinal cord, uh, which was showed uh, yellow in this picture. Um, the brain was on the top of our body and it was protected by cranial bone, meninges, uh, ventricles, and uh, the um, spinal cords were located in the, uh, was also protected by bone and the CSF. And uh, the peripheral nervous system is more peripheral in the more peripheral part. And so in this picture, which was showed in blue color, and uh, in specific, this um, peripheral nervous system could include the 12 pair of the cranial nerves and uh, 31 pair of uh, spinal nerves, which you already studied in anatomy, like radial nerve, ulnar nerve, or axillary nerve, like that. If we do more about physiological or functional classification, the nervous system could be divided into autonomic nervous system and uh, somatic nervous system. The uh, autonomic system, nervous system are kind of our, like run on its own nervous system. These are the parts of central and peripheral nervous system uh, that will eventually innovate smooth muscle and glands to help us regulate our body hemostasis or kind of a balanced point. Uh, the subdivision of the autonomic nervous system would be our sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system. We will talk more about it later. But this uh, sympathetic uh, nervous system will like, it's more about uh, fight or flight. Will help, uh, will like spend more energy to either run away or fight for something. But our parasympathetic nervous system will be more about rest and digest. Uh, it will help us restore our body hemostasis. Then we will have our somatic nervous system uh, that will innervate mainly the uh, musculoskeletal tissue and the skin. Do you still remember when you study anatomy last year? At the beginning, uh, we talk about the anatomical position. Uh, this position was used as a reference for describing the anatomical planes and the axes, and also help us to uh, describe the relationship of the body part, and which is uh, the body is assumed to be standing, feet together, the arm to the side, and the head, eyes, and palms of the hand facing forward. And uh, when you study the brain, the brain also have similar rules. Based on the anatomical position, the brain has a similar planes. You have, uh, like the, in this picture, in the left top one, you have the coronal section, and uh, the left uh, bottom one is a horizontal section. And sometimes you may see the picture in the top right one that is a mid sagittal section. And uh, also when you study the spinal cord, you can see the horizontal sections. So it also has this coronal section, horizontal section, and sagittal sections. 
and uh, similarly like the brain also have this uh, anatomical spatial and directional terms like medial lateral anterior and posterior and superior and inferior ventral dorsal proximal and distal in the in the superficial and deep structures uh, but we also have this uh, uh, rustral and cardio and rustral means uh, towards the head and then cardio means towards the tail or coccyx and also you have this uh, ipsilateral and contralateral so ipsilateral uh, it's a on the same side of the body and the contralateral means on the opposite side of the body and also there is uh, unilateral and bilateral unilateral means one side of the body uh, bilateral means both sides of the body and also when we um, talk about the nerves we will use this afferent and efferent so afferent means uh, sensory nerves that conduct the information centrally and the, the efference means conduct the information peripherally that's a motor, motor nerve so uh, based on the uh, anatomical position we have this uh, anatomical direction terms superior inferior anterior and posterior so you can see like the fish you have a very uh, straight straight line for this uh, superior inferior anterior and posterior but for the human brain, the human central system, we have a cephalic flexure, which was formed uh, during the embryology uh, development, which was formed by the uh, diencephalon and the brainstem, actually. So, uh, for the uh, you can see for the uh, spinal cord, the uh, ventral side will be anterior the dorsal side will be uh, posterior but for the brain the ventral side will be like more inferior the dorsal side will be uh, more superior so that's a difference you need to remember uh, to avoid any like mix uh, i will i will use more like superior inferior anterior and posterior because it's always right The whole neural system was composed by two principal category of cells, the neurons or nerve cells and the glial cells or glia. There are about 100 billion of neurons in the uh, nervous system and uh, a similar number of the glial cells. The uh, neural cells uh, usually have a cell body we can also call it soma and it usually has a long cylindrical process we call it axon and um, a serous this uh, branching process we call it dentrase the uh, axon could be enveloped by a kind of uh, glial cells we call it myelinated uh, Axons. In this slide, you can see two pictures. The left picture is the coronal section of the brain, and the, the right side is the cross section of the spinal cord. So, in central nervous system, uh, part of these tissues uh, looks darker, so we call it gray matter, and the other part is uh, looks in white so we call it white matter actually the gray matter is the area where the nervous cell body and the dentrates located and the white matter has the axons of the neural cells uh, many axons have a myelin sheath which make it looks in white and the gray matter of the brain usually we call it cortex
This slide defines a number of terms that you typically see in the nervous system. So, for example, the somatic nervous system is usually referring to the voluntary skeletal muscle. Visceral nervous system, viscera means organs, so it's nerve supply to the organs. Motor is efferent, sensory is afferent. Ganglia usually are defined as a cluster of nerve cell bodies located outside of the central nervous system, so in other words, outside of the, bone, the vertebral canal and the cranium. Of course, there is one major exception, the dorsal root ganglia, which I'm sure you remember from anatomy. It's tucked inside that vertebral canal and in the spinal canal. So technically, it's enclosed by bone, but it's generally referred to as the dorsal root ganglia, even though it's enclosed by bone. Nuclei is a cluster of nerve cell bodies located within the central nervous system. Of course, there's one exception to that. Deep in the brain, as we'll get to much later in the course, are a group of nuclei called the basal ganglia, and they're about as deep into the central nervous system as you can get. But traditionally, they are called basal ganglia, so we're not going to change that in this course. So ganglia normally is a cluster of nerve cell bodies located outside the nervous, central nervous system, except the dorsal root ganglia, and nuclei are a cluster of nerve cell bodies located within the central nervous system, except the basal ganglia. Interneurons are neurons that are located between neurons. Uh, tracks, are bundles of axons carrying similar information. They usually are carrying information from the same origin and with a common termination. All of this will make more sense once we get into the tracks. Other names for tracks, and remember this because you're going to come across all of these little terms here later on. Another name for a tract is a lemniscus or fasciculus or peduncle, or column, or capsule. They're all names, other names for tracks. Again, don't worry about that now because we get into all that later on. But I'm just bringing that up to you at this point. Sensation means awareness of stimuli. Perception is interpreting that stimuli into some meaningful information. So in other words, a person could have normal sensation. You brush their fingers with, a, with something. They can feel that. But if they've got some kind of perceptual problems, they won't be able to tell you what that was. That's where perception comes in. It's putting some kind of meaning to what the sensation is. In this form, I also listed the uh, terms we already talked about, the neuroscience, neuron cell, neural fibers, white matter, and uh, gray matter, and also the cortex. In the, the sulcus or uh, gyrus and fissure, we will talk about it later. Let's give an overview of the brain. Usually the brain was divided into four major anatomical parts, the cerebrum and uh, the uh, part which located inside the cerebrum, which is a diencephalon, and the cerebellum, and also the brainstem. The brainstem located between the cerebrum and the spinal cord. The largest part of the brain is uh, cerebrum, which includes the left and right uh, cerebral hemispheres. And uh, the two hemispheres was connected by the nerve fibers, which we call it chemistry. And uh, the name of it is corpus callosum. And according to our textbook, uh, the cerebrum could be further divided into five lobes. In some other 
books, uh, maybe it could be、uh, four lobes or six lobes. But in our test book, the、uh, cerebrum could be further divided into frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, and、uh, limbic lobe. We will talk more about it later. In the surface of the cerebrum, we call it cerebral cortex, and which is the gray matter. It's a nervous cell body and the dendritic, in which it's、uh, several millimeters thick. The inside the cerebrum mostly are、uh, white matters, but it could have some exceptions, and it, it,、uh, because. Some of the cell bodies are clustered like basal nucleus, and also the、uh, deep structures include the、uh, limbic system and、uh, internal capsules, etc. The diencephalon located inside the brain. In this picture, you can see this is a、um, mid-sagittal plane of the brain. The diencephalon was labeled in blue.、Uh, the diencephalon was it's all about、uh, thalamus, which which include thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, and epithalamus, and which we will study it、uh, later. The third part of the brain is the cerebellum. The cerebellum located Behind or in the posterior side of the、uh, brainstem, and、uh, in the inferior part of the brain, and、uh, in this picture, which is look、uh, colored by purple, the cerebellum attached to the brainstem by three massive. Fiber、uh, groups, which called peduncles, and it also the axis of the nervous fibers. The fourth part is the brainstem, and、uh, which colored by red. The brainstem con、uh, contains three part, from the superior to the inferior. Which called midbrain, the pons, and medulla. This picture gives you a more clear view of the relationship about the、uh, diencephalon, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. This is、uh, another picture which shows you. The、uh, diencephalic、uh, structures. You can see the uh, uh, thalamus, the subthalamus, and the hypothalamus. And this is a coronal section of the brain. This is a, a picture which shows you the inferior and lateral view of the brainstem. The left side is we look at the The brainstem from the inferior view. So from the anti, from the superior to the inferior, it's the mid、uh, mid brain, the pons and the medulla. And the right side is the lateral view of the brainstem. We、we'll、look at it from the right side of the brainstem. When we look at the brain, you can only see one third of the brain surface because you can find there are a lot of、uh, grooves, deep or shallow grooves on the surface of the brain, and、uh, between the grooves you have the ridges. So we call these、um, grooves. Sulci and、uh, these、uh, ridges is gyri, and、uh, also some of the sulcus we call it fissure. So when you look at this picture, you can see 
we, we are looking at the brain from the superior view. That means we look at the brain from the top of the head. So you can see the anterior side and posterior side of the brain. And in the middle, or you can see a red line that passing through the uh, sagittal plane. It's from the anterior to the posterior side. We call this line longitudinal fissure. It's a um, very deep group, groove between the two, uh, the left and uh, right cerebral hemisphere. This is a lateral view of our brain. And uh, you can see the left side is the anterior part. The right side is the posterior part. And you have the superior and inferior part of the brain. And you can see some of the uh, gyra are located more sagittally, and uh, some of them are arranged more horizontally. In the superior part of the brain, in the middle part, you can see the most anterior sagittally uh, arranged uh, gyra. And uh, behind it, is um, there is some um, sulcus, we call it central sulcus, which was labeled in red. And uh, in the middle part of the brain, you can see there's a horizontal blue line which labeled the lateral sulcus. These two sulcus are very important landmark for the lobe of the brain. This picture shows you the mid sagittal plane of the cerebrum and uh, we look at it from the medial view. So this is the right cerebral hemisphere and we look at it from the left side. So the left side will be the anterior part of the brain. The uh, right side will be the posterior part of the brain. And you can see there's a sulcus which marked in red that is a parietal occipital sulcus. And the inferior of it, you can see a sulcus which labeled in blue, that's the calcarean sulcus. This is uh, also uh, two very important landmarks. This picture just want to show you the uh, different view of the brain. It uh, look at from the inferior part of the brain. Uh, you may see the the uh, part of the brain stem and the left uh, temporal lobe have been removed. And you can see the longitudinal fissure between the uh, left and right cerebral hemisphere. But you cannot see the other like lateral sulcus or occipital temporal sulcus from this view. According to our textbook, there are five lobes in our brain. And in this picture, you can see picture A and C shows you the brain from the lateral view. And the picture B and D shows you the uh, brain from the medial view. Picture A and B showed you the different lobe were labeled in different colors. And you can see the most uh, anterior part of the brain from the middle side and uh, the lateral side was colored in uh, dark purple. That is a frontal lobe, which located superior to the lateral sulcus, anterior to the central sulcus. The uh, green part behind the uh, and posterior to the central sulcus is the parietal lobe. And then the most posterior part is the red part that is occipital lobe. And uh, inferior to the lateral sulcus, you can see the blue part 
that is the temple lobe. You can only see a small part of it from the medial view. Uh, if you uh, see this uh, picture B, you can see in the central part, which is like a ring labeled by uh, light purple, that is a limbic lobe. You may notice in some book the uh, brain was described. Um, you may notice uh, in some book they describe the lobes in differently. Um, for example, they may think there are only four lobes in the brain, which is a uh, frontal lobe, a temporal lobe, uh, occipital lobe, and uh, parietal lobe. But in some other books, uh, they think uh, there are six lobes in the brain, uh, which include the insular lobe. Uh, this, was sh uh, this is shown in the bottom left part. This picture shows you when you mm, spread the, the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe, you can see a small part of the brain that is insular lobe, which is also the cortex. From uh, slides 47 to 53, we will talk about the functional area or anatomical area of each lobe. Uh, you can see from this slide, uh, this is a frontal lobe. This frontal lobe uh, include the primary motor cortex, the premotor cortex, the prefrontal cortex, and the uh, Broca um, area, which is uh, part of the language functional area. And uh, we will talk it more in the, during the lecture time. So before the lecture time, try to read these pictures and try to connect the uh, functional part with the picture. And we will talk about more uh, during the lecture time. This is a picture I showed you the functional area of cerebrum. And try to use this picture to find the different functional area on the each lobe. For example, you can use this picture to label the different functional area on the slide number 47. For example, the broadcast area, where is it? and um, where is the primary motor cortex. You may find it it's mostly it's on the presental gyrus. Try to label it on that slide. Slide 54 to 56 talked about the, some clinical syndromes that you may have when different parts of the brain got injured. You may I read it on your own um, as a reference. And again, this part will not be tested. There are a lot of uh, deep structures inside the uh, cerebrum. But in this picture, we just want to show you the uh, nerve cell fibers, the commissure, uh, which connect the left and right cerebral uh, hemisphere. We call it uh, corpus callosum. And uh, you can see in this picture, the right side is the anterior part of the brain. The uh, left side is the posterior side. 
and uh, this is a medial view of the brain and in the center of the brain you can see the white part is the corpus callosum from the right to the left you have this rustrum the genu the body and uh, splenium in this slide, I just want to give you a recap of uh, what we talked about in this lecture. Uh, the central nervous system uh, was composed by brain and spinal cord. And the brain can be further divided into four parts. The cerebral hemisphere, the diencephalon, the cerebellum, and the uh, brainstem. Today, uh, in the latter part, we also give the overview of the cerebral cortex, which includes the five, uh, five lobes. About the functional area of this uh, each uh, lobe, we will talk more during the lecture time.